Up to this point, we've looked at three different bonding mechanisms, ionic bonding, covalent bonding, and metallic bonding. And in this video, we're going to begin looking at intermolecular forces. And these are the forces that occur between molecules. Now, although these aren't technically bonds, what they do is they hold the molecules together within a material. If we begin on the left hand side with dipole dipole forces. In an earlier video, we looked at the ionic bond that forms between sodium and chlorine to give us sodium chloride. And that was an ionic bond. Sodium gave up an electron, chlorine gained that electron, and then the positive and negative ions were drawn together. But what we're looking at there is one sodium chloride molecule in isolation. But what happens if we have another sodium chloride molecule? Well, what we see here is we have a positive sodium ion and we have a negative chlorine ion, and they are going to be attracted to each other. Although an ionic bond isn't formed, positive and negative attracts. So we might end up with another sodium chloride molecule. And once again, they're going to be attracted together. So although this isn't technically an ionic bond, what we do end up with is a strong bond because of the positive and negative attractions. If we move on to the right hand side, we're going to look at something called an induced dipole. And what we have there is a water molecule, H2O, and the bonding that's present there is covalent bonding. Hydrogen and oxygen share one electron. But as oxygen requires two electrons to complete its outer shell, it creates two of those bonds. So in effect, what we have is an electron from each material being shared like so. Now oxygen has a property that we call electronegativity. So what it actually does is it draws those electrons towards itself. Now, as we know, hydrogen only has one electron. So when this happens, what it does is it exposes the nucleus of the hydrogen. In doing so, we end up with two induced dipoles. As the oxygen draws the electrons towards it, it gets an induced negative dipole because there's a concentration of electrons around the oxygen. And as those electrons are drawn away from the hydrogens, what we end up with is a positive induced dipole like so, because we've exposed the positive nucleus of the hydrogen. So when another water molecule approaches, the oxygen, which has a negative induced dipole, is going to be drawn towards the induced positive dipoles of the hydrogen, like so. So here, our oxygen has an induced negative dipole, our hydrogen has an induced positive dipole, and this process will continue. If we look on our right hand side here, we have a hydrogen with an induced positive dipole and we have a hydrogen with an induced positive dipole. So what we would expect is another water molecule is likely to be attracted like so. Now, the important thing here is these intermolecular bonds, particularly these induced dipoles, are much weaker than the covalent and ionic bonds that we saw formed earlier. The dipole to dipole attraction is much greater than the induced dipole attraction, but these are both weaker than ionic and covalent bonds. Where this very much becomes important in terms of engineering materials is in polymers. So let's take a look at the polymer polyethylene. So at the top of the page here, we have a polyethylene molecule. And when we studied covalent bonding, we looked at how the bonds form between the hydrogen and the carbons. In effect, we have shared pairs of electrons. So the carbon shares one electron with this hydrogen. It shares one electron with this hydrogen and one electron with this hydrogen and so on. So for simplicity here, I've only pictured the shared electrons with hydrogen. However, we do also know that there's a covalent bond between consecutive carbon atoms. Now, if we think about what we spoke about previously, electrons carry a negative charge, and where electrons go, the negative charge or the charge cloud goes. If we look at our carbon atom on the left hand side here, those covalent bonds between carbon and hydrogen are free to rotate, they're not fixed in space. Although we quite often represent them as perfectly perpendicular, in actual fact, they're free to rotate around the carbon atom. Now how I've pictured it here, the hydrogen atoms have moved above the carbon atom, and in doing so, they've taken those electron pairs with them. So what we end up with 
is we end up with an induced negative dipole at the top. Now what that's also done is expose the nucleus of our carbon atom. And the nucleus is where our positively charged protons are. So what we end up with is an induced positive charge on this side of the carbon. If we move on to our second carbon, then that process has been reversed because the hydrogens have moved below the carbon. When they've moved below the carbon, they've taken the electrons, so we end up with an induced negative charge, and we end up with an induced positive charge above the carbon, and so on along that chain. Positive, negative, positive, negative. Now pictured below, we have the start of a second polyethylene molecule. Now what we notice this time is the negatively charged electrons are going to be drawn towards the positive dipole. So in actual fact, what we end up with this time is the hydrogens being drawn towards the dipole. We end up with a negative dipole here, an induced negative dipole, and an induced positive dipole here. If we move on to our second carbon, this time, the induced negative dipole here is going to repel the electrons. And when it repels the electrons, it pushes the hydrogens to the opposite side, like so. Now we still end up with those induced dipoles because where the electrons go, the induced negative dipole goes, and we've exposed the nucleus of the carbon. Now, as you can imagine, this continues. and we end up with something like this. The important part of this interaction is what happens between positive and negative induced dipoles. And what we'll see is attraction here, shown in orange. We'll see attraction here. We'll see attraction here. And we'll see attraction here. Now, as I mentioned earlier, these bonds are free to rotate. So what we're looking at here is a snapshot in time. If we were to wait a short period of time, then these bonds might rotate, the positive and negative induced dipoles may switch, but the process would remain the same. We would end up with this force of attraction between the positive and negative induced dipoles. Now the important thing to reinforce here is that these intermolecular bonds are very weak when compared to the covalent bonds that hold the chains together. So we have strong covalent bonds between the carbons and the hydrogens, and we end up with long chains of polyethylene, then between those polymer chains, we have these much weaker forces of attraction as a result of the induced dipoles. So intermolecular forces are weak and can easily be broken, but covalent bonds are much stronger and are much more difficult to break. It would be relatively easy to slide these two long molecules relative to each other, but it would be much more difficult to break the physical bonds within the polymer chains.